so, some of the stories do like the Moon Dog and uh, Wake of the Moon Doggy and uh, uh, the Boston Massacre? Um, the feedback that I get for the most part is overwhelmingly positive. Um, there have been times when I have uh, launched into some new uh, line of research where uh, I will get a lot of dire warnings that I'm, uh, you know, treading in the wrong direction and I need to make an about face right away. The moon landings was one of them. Uh, I got flooded with email from people telling me that, that if by taking that on, I was going to discredit myself and, and uh, you know, completely discredit all of my past work and, yeah. you know, I was basically dragging, it, dragging everything down with it if, yeah. if I continued on that. But, uh, but those people ultimately turned around and acknowledged uh, because I tend to put together the most overwhelming case that I can, you know, some, some people think that I, you know, beat a dead horse because I just keep going and going. But my goal is to just create the most overwhelming case that, that I can so that, you know, you may be able to bat away a few facts here and there, but at some point you got to acknowledge that there's something seriously wrong with the official story. Yeah. And so I, for the most part, I tend to win people over eventually, but uh, there's been a lot of people that have been skeptical initially. Um, when I took on the peak oil thing, it was the same thing. I got a lot of dire warnings that I was venturing down the wrong trail. And, uh, Is it all but, email or any kind of voice messages? Um, generally not by voice messages, no. Um, no. I've only, uh, the only time I've ever actually gotten voice messages was this one really weird time. It was, God, I don't know how many years ago, where um, I had been on, I had actually been on vacation. Uh, I don't remember where. I'd been, been, been away for a couple of weeks and was, was pretty much cut off from, from the news cycle and, uh, you know, from TV and the internet and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I had literally just got home, uh, just flown in that day and went home that night, that evening, and turned on the TV to uh, see what was happening on the evening news. And the, the lead story that night was that a guy by the name of Dave McGowan had just wiped out his entire family oh <laughs> in, over in like Riverside County. Um, oh, wow. The guy was almost exactly the same age as me. He was either one year older or one year younger. I don't remember what. Which he had the same number of kids, same you know living situation, living in you know Southern California, and so all these reports were going out that you know Southern California and Dave McGowan, age so and so, had you know wiped out his whole family and then committed suicide. <laughs> and for a long time after that, my phone was ringing, my email, I was just insane. People were posting stuff on the internet saying, here we go again, you know, we got another Gary Webb, we got another, uh, uh, you know, whoever, uh, who, Danny Casolaro, you know, this, this is a, you know, this is a warning to everybody else out here. And some of, I haven't looked lately, but as recently as like a couple of years ago, there's still posts actually up on the internet to this day claiming that I was killed for uh, my political view. <laughs> so you're not really you. And I'm actually, yes, I'm yeah. really not. But that was the only time that I got actual phone calls. And I mean, I was getting calls and letters and emails from like everybody that had ever known me. You know, just, are you okay? And well, why are you asking me if I'm okay if you think that I just killed myself? <laughs> Obviously not. <laughs> So yeah, that was a weird time, and I actually withdrew, I became very withdrawn for a while, I didn't post anything, didn't go on the internet, uh, it was a really weird time, and I was getting all these weird emails, the, the, freak, the freakiest one I got was just one line, it just said, uh, is your name Sarah Connor? <laughs> and, uh, the implication being that somebody's out, you know, hunting Dave McGowan's out of the phone book, you know, and had got the wrong one. And uh, yeah, that was that was a weird, weird, weird time in my life. But uh, that, that's really the only time where I've ever actually felt afraid. You know, I I, I, I was pretty, kind of paranoid for a while after that. It was very strange, and it still comes up now. Um, just just like four or five years ago, I went to my uh, my uh, 30th high school reunion, and this girl that uh, I hadn't seen in since high school days, came walking across the floor just absolutely ashen-faced and, and walks up to me and says, you, 
you're alive. <laughs> yeah, obviously. And she says, I owe you the biggest pop, the biggest apology. I've been telling, I've been telling people for years that. You, you know, well, could you go down and find all those people and tell them that I didn't, you know, kill my family and myself, please? So yeah, I don't don't really want to be known for that around the old schoolyard. <laughs> Just do the Mark Twain thing and just <laughs> rumors of your death have been greatly exaggerated. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, uh, anyone else? Yes. Uh, I love the, the Boston bombing page that you put up and I love the photos that you, you did. Is That's a, another one that I got warned about that I shouldn't come in, that I should <laughs> not, absolutely should not touch. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Is there a, like an index of where those photos came from, I guess. Can you source, is there a source amount? Uh, there's not, you know, I get people, I get requests from people all the time that want me to revisit that and they want me to go back through the, through the early, because I started adding arrows like halfway through because people were having a hard time following what I was, you know, pointing out in the picture, so I started adding arrows and now I, I get requests to this day to go back and, and uh, redo all the early posts so that they're easier to follow and, and hopefully I'll get time to do that one of these days, but I've, I've just been so swamped with stuff with this interview requests and doing interviews and, and just it's like it's almost become like a second full-time job and I, I still do actually have a, a real world full-time job that pays the bills so uh, <coughs> doing the best I can but I, 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 admit, I, I hope to get back to that at some point and, and uh, improve upon what, what's there now so do you have yeah uh, with what happened in the uh, with the hippie scene back in the 60s and the 70s, and even days and such, do you see a parallel occurring right now in the music scene in America? As far as, well, I mean, as, as uh, disinformation, misdirection, and I, things like that. I think the music scene is much more manufactured now. It's, uh, you know, people, one of the questions that, that I get... not spontaneous? Mm, I wouldn't say so. One of the questions that I get now, you know, from people quite a bit is, is are, are you saying that, that, that these people were just no-talent hacks, that, that were only maneuvered, you know, in, into position because of who they were and their family connections? And, and you know, I'm, no, I'm not arguing that. Uh, but I am saying that, 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 that certainly a reason that, that people from military intelligence backgrounds were, that, were so ridiculously overrepresented in the scene. Um, but nowadays, uh, but you know, but the, but mo a lot of them did have very real talents. You know, some of them were, were phenomenally talented. Uh, people like Brian Wilson, uh, you know, was just phenomenally talented. You know, arranger, producer, songwriter, musician, multi instrumentalist. I mean, vocalist. You know, the guy could do it all. Uh, Frank Zappa as well, other than a vocalist, but. Uh, everything else. Charles and, Manson. Uh, Arthur Lee from Love, the same thing. I mean, just, you know, some of these people were just phenomenally talented. And I think you would have a very hard time these days arguing that the, the worldwide, this, this massive worldwide fame that, that, that uh, our artists achieve nowadays in such a ludicrously short amount of time is based solely on talent. You know, I mean, I, I find it very hard to believe that a Lady Gaga or a Miley Cyrus or what you know becomes that big of an international celebrity with all this critical attention and whatnot, just based solely on talent because you know she's I just I just don't see it. I think the star making uh, machine has has really been refined to the point where talent is, is sort of uh, you know sort of an a, almost an afterthought now and. If you have a marketable face and a marketable image, it seems they, they can make you a star, you know? Um, so uh, that's, you know, basically my take on, on where we've come. So the, the 60s were really kind of, kind of actually quaint, you know I mean? <laughs> Even if the scene was totally controlled, you can't really argue with the music that, that came out of that. I mean, I, I still listen to it to this day. It has a, has a different, uh, has a much different meaning to me at times, but I still listen to it. And, uh...